Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is a briefing from www.central-mos.com about astronomy, the science of astronomy, and the and the probability graphs and so on and so forth. There's a lot of confusion amongst Muslims and social media and stuff. So as you know, um, I will whistle through them um, to give you uh, the layman an idea who are not familiar with this science. Jazakallah khairan. Whatever I'm going to say, I'm going to back them with facts. However, it is my opinion and you have the right to absolutely disagree with it. Let's proceed. So the first one to understand is when someone asks you, what is your position on the determination of Islamic months? They have the right to ask that question. So they say absolutely no problem. My stance is that moon sighting should be done every single month. That is my stance. Point number one, moon sighting, not calculations moon sighting every single month i believe that science can be used as a tool and as an aid to assist in the moon sighting and then you say the science does not override sighting so i believe in sighting i do not believe in calculations i believe in sighting and they ask you what is your evidence saying the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sumu li ru'yati wa aftiru li ru'yati observe fast when you see it the new moon and break fast when you see the moon the new moon of Shawwal. So by that definition, it is extended to all 12 months of the Islamic calendar. I have heard talks and talks and talks lasting hours. These four, four words of Rasulullah say, it is my stance to observe the moon sighting every single month. I use science as a tool, it doesn't matter. I go out and sight the moon, take the science away, it does not matter. I will still sight the moon. Make people understand that. So if they accuse you that you use tools or calculations, say, no, I absolutely not. I use science as a tool. Take it away, no problem. I will still cite. Moving on. Let's have an argument about science. So you ask this person, they're saying, okay, this is the prayer timetable from your mosque. Today is the 8th, but your prayer timetable has fajr times, for example, on the 11th, which is three days later. Do you believe these times to be accurate? Because it's in the future. How did you determine that? So they will say, no, no, no. I believe calculations are valid for prayer times, but they're not valid for, uh, for moon sighting. They said, no, that's not the question I'm asking. You're talking about applicability of these calculations that do, they do not apply to moon sighting. I've already said that. What I'm asking you is how come these future calculations for prayer times are valid, but the same source, the observatory, gives you moon sighting calculations which are invalid? How come? I am not asking you whether to apply them to moon sighting or not. I already told you in this slide, I use science as a tool. Take it away, no problem. I will still be sighting the moon. I'm asking a different question. Understand the question. There are scholars who've spent 45 minutes here that calculations do not apply to moon sighting they've not basically addressed are they valid because why are they invalid they're valid for your prayer times three days ahead of your of your prayer timetable you have got these calculations and the same source is giving you moon sighting calculations so why are the moon sighting calculations invalid understand this question they are spending time here saying they do not apply to moon sighting. That is not my question. My question is, is it valid? Stick to it. Tell them, look, I want an answer. Are they valid? I'm not talking about using it. I've already said, throw it away. I don't really care. I will still sight the moon. Are they invalid? And if they're invalid, how come? How come they're valid for prayer times, but invalid for moon sighting? I've already said, I'm spending some time here. They do not apply to moon sighting. No problem. Throw it away. What is your point? Are you saying that they're valid? or it for prayer times and invalid for moon sighting that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever next what these people say the basically astronomy and the graphs they say graphs but it's actually the calculations are saying that the moon sighting was impossible and yet we had so many places who had moon sightings please understand the difference between claims and actual moon sighting so for example if someone claims even 20 times, there were 20 claims of moon sighting, and a scholar accepts those claims, that does not mean moon sighting occurs. It's a claim. It's a claim. Let me tell you a little story. So you're going with your family on holiday. Prayer time comes. You all get out of the car. You don't know which direction to face, so you stop a Muslim person. 
and you ask, brother, can you tell me the direction of the Qibla? The person says, yes, no problem. The Qibla is this way. All your family, mashallah, pray. You're on your way, and your daughter said, Dad, you remember the Qibla compass I gave you gave me last Eid? I still got it. Can I check the direction of the Qibla? You said, sure, go ahead, Aisha. Go ahead and check. Aisha takes out the Qibla direction. Qibla is actually the exact opposite way. She says, Dad, Dad, we prayed in the wrong way. What are we supposed to do? So you said, this is not right. And then you, your phone was not charged. That's why you couldn't get the direction in the Qibla. You stick it in the lighter. You all have meal. You take it out. You check the direction in the Qibla. And indeed, it is this way. Right here. Not that way. Every scholar in the world tells you that your prayer is valid because you have asked a Muslim person. They told you this direction was dead wrong. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to challenge science? So you can have one compass, two compass, GPS, satellite tracking, whatever, and the Qibla directions indeed this way. My brother and sister in Islam, citing claim and even acceptance of it. So basically, I pray in my masjid. And there's another brother, Abdullah. My imam sees both of us and we pray with good people. We follow the sunnah. We pray every single day. And then we cited something in the sky. We go to the imam and say, you know what? We cited the moon. The imam says, okay, these people are Muslims. I know them. They come to my masjid. He accepted citing, declared Eid. Does this mean the sighting has actually occurred? No, it means that the Sharia conditions for me testifying to an Imam and Imam accepting it and issuing judgment have been fulfilled. It does not mean the, the, the sighting is actually real. These people don't understand that. They've spent 45 minutes, an hour, long Facebook posts, you know, this country sighted the moon, that side country sighted the moon. No, there were claims of moon sighting which were accepted by scholars and that's fine that is their judgment but you cannot basically challenge established science based on these claims please understand this point and i will spend a little bit more time on it to make you understand a little bit better so one thing i noticed is none of these people are talking about mali Okay, so the new moon was born on the 3rd of June 2019 at 10.02 Universal Time. Mali had moon sighting witnesses on the 2nd of June 2019. Ask these people, is the Mali sighting valid? Because the, they, those claims were accepted and the end of Ramadan was declared. And on the day when the new moon wasn't even born, the people in Mali actually prayed Salah. Tell him, is that valid? Yes or no? If they, if they say, yes, we believe this to be valid, none of them are actually ex talking about Mali at all. They're talking about Saudi Arabia. They're talking about Pakistan, X, Y, Z. And I can go into a lot of details about each of those claims, but stick to Mali. Tell them, do you think that's valid? Because that is a claim. Okay. And that's absolutely fine. Certain people might in Mali might have seen something. They might have gone to a scholar and the scholar accepted those sightings. Nevertheless, is that actually sighting so as i told you this picture right here you prayed salah you checked with 50 compasses gps tracking qibla is this way no problem your salah is perfectly valid but are you going to challenge the science of physics and the science of magnetic fields because they could also interfere with the compass just because someone told you qibla is this way no absolutely no that will be absurd now the emotional thing that these people play at is they say listen are you saying all these people who claim moon sighting were lying? No, we don't believe they're lying at all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for making that assertion. We're saying somebody somewhere made a mistake. A people, a person can make a mistake. They don't have to be li liars. They don't have to be deceivers. But because they're trying to emotionally, uh, I don't know, uh, entice you or emotionally turn you another way, I, I can't think of the word. Nobody's saying that they're lying, but a mistake has occurred. But if it's not a mistake, let me tell you something else. Haramain social media account posted this picture of the moon in Ramadan. I shall offer them 2,000 US dollars and I say submit this for independent verification to any university of the world. I will personally pay you for the expenses to get this checked and then I'll pay you $2,000. You can spend that to anywhere, anyhow you want from the charity. After I said that, another brother turned up, offered another 1,000 pounds. Then another brother turned up and offered 1,000 pounds. All they had to do was everybody who thinks that this claim is valid, all they had to do is say, no problem. This is their easy chance to make money. 
submit this to an independent uh, you know organization get this verified and you know what that's it the you know the science will be humiliated forever this is how you challenge science set it up for scrutiny simply a moon sighting claim in in certain countries is not enough to challenge science once again please understand what i'm trying to say claims were made some scholars accepted the claim absolutely fine nothing wrong with that that does not mean that science is wrong science could be wrong so i'm not saying science is a revelation from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it could be this is the way the science works if you're in the field of science no problem your stance gets challenged all the time if you do msc phd that is the whole point you write a dissertation and you offer it for challenge you want people to poke holes in it that's absolutely fine well, what i'm saying is a claim of moon sighting a claim of moon sighting is not sufficient to challenge science it may be sufficient to fulfill the the, the requirements in islamic sharia that's a different argument altogether moving on now one thing that these people will never do from the beginning you have given your stance what your stance is you keep asking them i want to see your stance for every single month how do you stop and end the islamic months there are three days of fasting according to sunnah uh, the sisters who get divorced they have to spend their idda. a person has to calculate zakah all of these injunctions in islam are linked to the islamic calendar so you ask them okay how okay fair enough let's agree to disagree on your stance on shawwal and on your stance you say that shawwal saudi arabia declared no problem let's agree to disagree what i want to know from you is how did you start the month of safar go ahead show me the moon sighting declaration from saudi arabia show me this so and believe me it will go around in circles forever this person will never answer your question straight i challenge you go back to anybody who follows saudi arabia uh, moon sighting in any country you want and ask them they will go around in circles forever 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 they will never answer this okay until you until they're basically pushed against the wall they got they will poke holes in your science they will poke holes in this they will poke holes in that they will never answer a simple question but eventually they will have no choice and they will say listen we follow ummul qura calendars at this point you say excuse me ummul qura calendar is based on calculations astronomical calculations so what are you on about because you you poked holes on all of these astronomical calculations and now you're saying for so your stance is let me summarize your stance is that you follow moon sighting for every single month physical moon sighting for every single month using science as an aid you can throw away science it doesn't matter you follow the setting sun you sight the moon move on what they're saying is for most of the year they follow moon sighting no sorry for most of the year they do not follow moon sighting they follow calculations and for certain months they extract the information from saudi arabia which by the way the saudi scholars tell you not to do they say sight the moon locally and follow the country closest to you where's the evidence for this so basically uh, dr yaqub ad-dahlawi he's a vice chancellor of university of medina and he trains judges okay and he says even though this procedure meaning of moon sighting is adopted every month by the moon sighting committees the official announcement and particular attention is only made for the months of ramadan shawwal and dhul hijjah for other months the generally prepared ummul qura calendar is followed however moon sighting reports may be on record with the moon sighting committees there is no declaration how else can you tell this way look at the and by ramadan i mean ramadan shawwal and dhul hijjah by the way i'm just making an argument very simple for you to understand if you notice the announcement the people who follow saudi arabia make for the month of ramadan it says words to this effect supreme court of the kingdom saudi arabia has now officially announced or high judiciary council of saudi arabia announces or you can also say majlis qada al a'la in saudi arabia has announced notice every other month absolutely nothing rajab has started safar has started rabi al-awwal has started rabi thani has started so on one hand i commend you for following the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and a consistent method so what you're doing is you are physically sighting the moon every single month using science as an aid take away the science as an aid and you will carry on sighting the moon no problem these guys for the majority of the month are following science then when it comes to shawwal questioning the same science that they follow also when it comes to prayer times right here 
look at the prayer time so on the first of the month they create a prayer timetable for the entire month <clears throat> it has prayer times for the entire month 20 days later 25 days later and they have no problems trusting these calculations but when it comes to moon sighting somehow they have a problem with this calculation again they spent 45 minutes telling you that moon sighting is not done on calculations absolutely agreed moon sighting is a physical observation nevertheless the moon sighting calculations come from the same source as your prayer time calculations we are not discussing the applicability or the usage of the calculations we are questioning the validity of it you have no problems accepting it for your prayer times but you seem to have a problem accepting it for moon sighting this kind of inconsistent behavior comes from those who do not understand science just because what they're trying to do is they're trying to defend basically the the absurd and ridiculous Saudi moon sighting declarations and and what they're doing is they oh, actually digging a bigger hole for themselves may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all jazakallah khair